Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Speak Up Sis podcast. This is the place where everyday women and men have an opportunity to share their stories to inspire yours. We say what you think no one wants to hear, but everyone needs to know. I'm your host, Angel Charmaine, and tonight is Encouraging Experts. We show up here every third Monday of the month, and so you all know that we've got a second host tonight as well. My sis, Charnel Williams, is in the building, and we are excited to be here to talk with you all tonight. We've got an amazing guest Miss Kendria Johnson is going to talk with us tonight. But before we bring Kendria on, Charnel. Hey. Hey. It's been forever. It's, I say that all the time, but no, this time for real, it's been forever. It seems like every time <laughs> we show up in the space together, it's been a while since we've shown up in the space. But no worries. We're working on that, y'all. We've got some things going on behind the scenes. Make sure that you stay connected with us. We've got some amazing shows coming up in the new year in 2023. So y'all just hold tight. We're going to be here. We're going to bring you goodness. We're going to encourage you. And we're going to bring you some tips and strategies to help you along the way professionally uh, as well as entrepreneurially, right? So, Charnel, catch us up a little bit. What, what, what have you been up to, sis? busy 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 well we're in our my busy season for okay clean corp oh yeah holiday time so everybody wants to get their house clean at the last minute okay um so we're trying to <laughs> accommodate as many people as we can uh-huh um i've also made some admin changes and some you know planning for 2023 right? okay and I started that back in the summertime. I didn't, you know, you want to plan ahead. Right, right. So I'm excited. I'm I'm excited about how we're going to end this year and how we're going to begin 2023, despite this, you know, the recession and everything that's going on. Yeah, I tell people all the time, some of the largest, most prominent companies that we all know today, day Mm -hmm. some of our banks and things of that nature they became who they are during the great depression during times of recession right we don't want to pull back during recession time we want to go forward full speed ahead right? right bulldoze all of this stuff don't give up during This time of recession, this is this is where the diamonds are made. Yep. Huge opportunities, huge opportunities. So that's what's up. Well, I'm sure with with Clean Core, you're going to make lots of money at the end of this quarter with. That's the goal. (laughs) (laughs) You got you got Thanksgiving, you got Christmas. Folks are planning for parties and family gatherings and things and they need everything perfect. Yep. Because you know you have those uninvited guests that show up. Yes. And yes. criticizing, oh, your baseboards. Right. Oh, you need to get your house clean. Right. And you I'm know. sure after COVID, people are really anal about clean being clean and making sure that things are. Yeah. I think people get a better understanding and appreciation mm-hmm. for it more so now than before. Um, but you still have some that are still, you know. Uh, Why you want to look like you look like you want to say they still nasty? That's exactly what I was gonna say. <laughs> but I was like, oh, I don't know if I should say nasty. <laughs> but that's exactly. We'll, listen, we'll call a spade a spade. Okay, that's right. It, but but here's here's the beauty in it. At least they know they're nasty, and that's why they hire you. Yeah, yeah. Then you have the ones that don't know they're nasty. <laughs> They don't realize how nasty they are. <laughs> right. You go, oh, my house is not that dirty. And you go in and you can barely walk in it. Right. You're like, I'm going to have to charge you 200 right. extra dollars. Right. Oh, my <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what's up. That's what's up. Well, you know what? And Speak Up Sis Land, we have um, been doing some new things as well. So for those of you who do not know, and if you don't know, that means you're not connected. Make sure you go to speakupsis.com and get on the newsletter so that you can stay up to date with all things Speak Up Sis. But we released the Speak Up Sis magazine. Let's talk about it. 
Yes, girl. We've got an entire magazine now. Um, yes, I'm super excited. We launched September 24, 2022. Um, I was real excited because within the first 30 days, we had over 1,200 impressions, over 500 reads of the magazine digitally, and it has been downloaded in over seven countries wow. within 30 days of launch. Wow. So, yes. So it's growing. I'm excited. I'm excited to see how we connect the podcast and the magazine. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to being able to feature our future guests from the podcast and the magazine and things of that nature. So you all, if you're not connected, go ahead and get connected. So we're going to go ahead and start this conversation tonight. Teacher burnout. Yeah, it's real. Is real. It's real. And before we get started, I want to give a shout out to Valerie. Okay. She says hello. Hey, Valerie. On YouTube? Yeah, she's on YouTube. All right. Make sure if you are following us on YouTube, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure to click subscribe and that notification bell so that you are notified every time that we have new content on the channel. I appreciate you. All right, so I, I see there, there's somebody peeking in on Facebook, but they haven't spoken yet, so we're going we gonna to give them some time. How you doing, Gemma? It's good to see you in the building. Thank you for joining us tonight. So tonight, we're going to be talking about teacher burnout. We've got an expert in this arena. She is an educator. She has a master's degree. She is also an international educator, and she's an author. And she's going to come into the space and talk to us about burnout for teachers. What what can you do to maybe prevent or stay away burnout? She's going to talk to us about what to do if you are currently burnt. <laughs> Just forget the out. You just burnt. What What is it that you can do? And then she's going to talk to us about what are some next steps just in case you just already out the door and you just need to know what to do next. So let's welcome Kendria Johnson to Speak Up Sis podcast. Welcome, sis. How you doing? I'm doing great, Angel. Thank you so much for having me today. That's what's up. And you look beautiful. For those of you Thank who you. are watching via <laughs> YouTube or uh, Roku on the BoxCast channel or whether you're watching on Facebook, I know you can see her. She's glorious right now. Just <laughs> all her melanin is popping. <laughs> <laughs> but we know that that she has she's gotten herself up pretty early because she is not in the United States of America, she is actually in the United Arab Emirates. So, Kendra, if you will, please introduce yourself to the Speak Up Sis podcast listeners. Tell us a little bit about who you are and where you are before we jump into our topic tonight. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. So, my name is um, Kendra Johnson. I am originally from Dallas, Texas, and I was a teacher there for about 12 years in the public school system when I had basically hit that that wall of burnout that we're about to talk about here. Mm -hmm. And I, this this opportunity just jumped in my lap. It just kind of fell into my inbox about teaching overseas, and I just decided to do it. I made a drastic change. I don't always recommend that you to my clients that you do something that big, but I took this opportunity, and when, it, when I moved here, things started to happen for me. It started to move and change. My mindset started to shift. And I started to basically make um, different choices for myself and my career. And that's why I'm still a teacher to this day. So I, I'm now in year 22. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And so, and I love it. I love it. I'm a math and science teacher. I teach fifth grade um, uh, math and science here. And um, just being here has made all the difference. And so once, once your mind is clear and you have uh, clear goals for yourself, then things like, you know, a book, you know, traveling, things that you love to do actually just kind of manifest themselves. So I am here to basically open up the door and leave the door open for other teachers who might be experiencing some type of, you know, career fatigue, let's call it. And, you know, I shuffled them in 
And I said, come on over here. Well, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's see where we at and see how we can get to the, the next level. So that's just a little bit about me. A little bit. <laughs> okay. And before before yeah. we jump into, uh, and, and those of you who are uh, watching, feel free to put your comments in the chat. If you have questions, we you can ask them tonight. We've got the expert in the house. And so we're going to let her help us all out tonight. But Kendria, if you will, please uh, tell us just a little bit about Teacher of the Year Strive to Thrive Toolkit, because it's it's a book that you've written to help teachers. So just really quickly, give us a little information about that so we can include that into our conversation tonight as well. I sure will. Yes, that's like my baby. My books are my baby. This is my second book. My first book was about me. This one is actually about my career okay. and my life and how I got to Abu Dhabi. I just I had to a lot of questions about how I got here. Well, it was a long journey. It was a process. And it starts out with, you know, my struggles with burnout because I wasn't calling it that. Mm -hmm. Angel, when it first started happening to me, I wasn't calling it that. I just knew I was tired all the time and that I was sick a lot mm -hmm. and that my hair was falling out. My skin would break out in hives. Um, I had a high blood pressure, of course, mm, had high blood pressure and I also had anemia. So if I would get up too fast, I'd, I'd feel faint. I'd, I'd start to have uh, fainting spells. And it was it was one thing after another, just one thing after another. I'd go to the doctor and get pills for one thing, and then something else would creep up, and then I'd get pills for that as well, medicine for that. And so I was just like, something's not right. I, I was 37 years old, losing my hair. I had patches of hair uh, missing from, my, wow. from the back of my head. And I was like, this is not right. Something's not right. And all of those things were related to stress. Stress was the culprit. That was the thing that was inside of that was the the common denominator of everything that I was going through medically. So when I started to, you know, kind of be burned out emotionally um, and mentally, but then when it started to affect my health, I knew I had to do something different. So this book chronicles that journey. And so when I moved here, um, people always think that, you know, it just automatically changed me. It did not. I still had to go through um, some self help some mm -hmm. help self I had to go through some things where I, it's not it's not working okay <laughs> taking all these pills and having high blood that's not working I'm too young for all this and so moving here once I started to do the work on myself and I started to make goals for myself um things started to change things started to happen for me and me being a teacher and me being a writer it's just I write everything down I just do I write everything I journal I put everything on in, on in pen and paper so I just wrote this book during the pandemic, mm -hmm. <laughs> started out as a, a, an online course that I was giving the six steps to successful teaching. And then I just put it in a book. And it did, so it didn't take me but two weeks to put it all together. And I was like, I'm going to try if I can to help someone else who, who may be struggling with the same things I was struggling in because I did right. what most, most people do. They go to their friends. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they go to their friends and they're like, you know, I'm just not having a great, I'm just, I'm not having a good experience with this teaching thing. And they was like, oh, girl, just suck it up. That just comes with the territory. Right. You know, stressed. We stress. I'm stressed. We all stress. You just have to get over it. But I'm like, I'm not getting over it. Exactly. And I found myself like trying to smile my way through it. So my friends, even though they meant well, they were just like not helping me. So I sought professional help. I had some mental health professionals that come in and I paid these people to say, okay, what is going on with me? And we dealt with some of those issues that I was having, like um, uh, people pleasing and mm. not wanting people to dislike me and, you know, not saying no, because I don't want anybody to be mad at me if I don't show up and do everything for all people. Right. Right. And, you know, I've been cured from all of that, but it took work because someone telling me to say no wasn't the same thing as me actually having to do it. Right. Because there's a price for peace. A oh my goodness. Peace. Okay. Yeah. We're going to, all right, let's slow down <laughs> here because sis, <laughs> You have said a lot, and we're going to unpack this because you said there's a price for peace. Mm -hmm. yep. Chanel, yeah, she said a, a price for peace. And everything you just said, we've talked about mm -hmm. even in, in entrepreneurship in general, right? So so let's, let's start here. Let's unpack this a little bit. So okay. we've got some teachers, right? So we've got some mm -hmm. teachers who are watching. And they're listening. Can we start with how they can can determine 
when they are in a place of burnout? Like, can you give us some some signs, some symptoms? I know you told us some things <laughs> sure. that happened to you, right? Right. Are there right. sort of some general things that people can look, teachers can look for to at first yeah. identify? Like, maybe I'm getting right. well, a little burnt out. <laughs> I think people pretty much they know when they, they hit the wall with it, <laughs> especially when you when you in the parking lot every day, like not not once a week, not once a month, every day crying like I got to go in here and do this again. When you start feeling that, because for four years straight, I was like, I am done. This is my last year. I'm not doing this mm-hmm. again. This is too much stress. I'm gonna go back and do something else. I got two degrees. I'm gonna figure out something else, right? Uh huh. But there the the signs of of burnout are different for different people. You can Google it if you like, and you know. But but the thing about big Google and stuff is it's like. WebMD, you just think mm-hmm. you're suffering from everything. Right. But you know, um, if you Google a list, such mm-hmm. as the one that's in my book, if you Google that list and there was 10 things on it, mm-hmm. right? There was 10 things that, that say you, I had eight. Oh, wow. I had eight. I had eight of them. I wasn't sleeping. Mm-hmm. Well, I had complete anxiety. I was neglecting uh, my friends and family. I was barely seeing them. Mm-hmm. I was putting in way more hours at work than I should have been putting in. Mm. Um, of course, I had, you know, medical issues. I had medical, um, I just described just a few right. medical issues. And then I, I just, there was this, I, I remember being in a space where I would sit in my living room and I would I couldn't go to sleep. I couldn't sleep. And even if I went to sleep, I would wake up. In the middle of the night, and I remember my heartbeat would be be going a, a miles, a million miles an hour when I woke up, and I'm like, something's not right. And I didn't have anyone. I was I'm single, so I didn't have anyone gotcha. in my life saying, "You need to go check in with yourself. You need to figure mm-hmm. out what's going on." People will say things like, "You know, you just need a vacation." Right. And even on my vacation, I wasn't sleeping. Right. And even on my vacation, I wasn't rest. My mind was not at rest. Let me be, uh, let me clarify. My mind was not at rest. Even though I'm sitting on the couch at home, my mind would be going a million miles an hour and I'd wake up in the middle of the night and be on the computer. Gotcha. Right? Just, just, just doing stuff, just doing stuff. So I keep my mind occupied because I have been programmed to believe that in order to be a good teacher, you have to be 100% present mm-hmm. for those kids. And that means even mm-hmm. on, and on the job and after, after the job. And I have been programmed to believe that. And it is absolutely not true. That is the reason I wrote the book because you can be a, a very good teacher and not have to sacrifice your personal life, your personal time, your relationships. You don't have to put in all those hours that they ask you to put in, especially if they're asking you to do it for free. Oh, there's things that you can do. Right. That put boundaries around yourself. Uh-huh. Okay? So if you're experiencing anything like, you know, um, you know, you, you're feeling restless and, you know, you have high anxiety, you have, you know, maybe you're depressed. Mm-hmm. Maybe you've been diagnosed with depression because that's definitely one on the list. So I was both. I was I was depressed when I wasn't at work. And I had anxiety when I was at work. Ugh. And nothing was helping. Nothing was helping me. I had to go and see um, some mental health professionals to figure out where is all of this coming from. And once you unpack it, it's different for different people. Mm-hmm. Now, as a person that is, helps other teachers, I talk to teachers every day. Mm-hmm. Of course, do at work and then after work, uh, my clients. And you always can pinpoint it to down to three things. It's either a person, place, or a thing that's got them um, in this space where they just, I don't know if I can take it a day, uh, another day. I don't know if I'm going to be here next year. I don't know if I was teaching this for me. I don't, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. So once you get to the, well, why don't you like it? What's going on with you? So yeah, I, if, if you have any kind of symptoms, you kind of know with just like I was every day, I'd cry. I'd cry when I get to work. <laughs> I'd cry in the parking lot. I'd cry on my break. And then I'd cry when I got home because I was tired. I th- I think that, I was exhausted. That's, that's that's a good point because even mm-hmm. in life or even if you're just going to work, I know people and I've experienced this too. When you sit in a car and you just got to get your mind right before right. you go in that place, mm-hmm. right? And I know it's it's learning and understanding yourself, your body, your habits. Uh-huh. For me, when I'm stressed out, I d- I don't realize I'm stressed out until everything is finished right because I'm going 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 I don't know I'm stressed out until I don't have an appetite Mm. when I don't have an appetite that's I'm like okay you're stressed about something yeah and because you're on this hamster wheel 
sometimes mm-hmm. you don't even realize what it is because there's so many layers right. and arenas mm-hmm. and things and people pulling on you and situations mm-hmm. and fires you have to put out. So I, I think that's, that's, that's really good. And it's good mm-hmm. to recognize and to know and understand yourself. Yeah. And pay attention to those signs. Yeah. Because I, like right. I said, I don't realize I'm stressed out until I stop mm-hmm. eating. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, my, my thing, even now, I can look, hindsight is always twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. I can yep. see this when I was uh, in formal uh, or traditional education, but even now in entrepreneurship, I know when I'm done, right. when everything's a mess around me, when my room, yeah. when I got the dirty clothes and the clean clothes mm-hmm. all on the bed mm-hmm. with an empty mm-hmm. plate and a bowl over there. Yeah. And some cups over there, yeah. all in one room. And then my workspace is is junky. I know then. Okay, I got. I'm I'm having some mental. Mm-hmm. Like this is this some mental or stuff. Even your mood and your attitude. Yes, it's yes. When I'm unable mm-hmm. to, when my when I allow my physical space to become disheveled. Yeah. And 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 all a mess. And then and then I and then I sort of get stagnant and I'm like, okay, Mm -hmm. I'm overwhelmed now Mm -hmm. and I can't even clean up. Right. Right. That's when I know, okay, sit down. You need to pull back. Yeah. Sit down and breathe. And breathe. (laughs) Get it together. Breathe. Yes. Yes. I I totally get that. So okay, so signs. The truth is is that people people know the signs. They know mm-hmm. what they, well, some people some aren't people really don't. self-aware. I was going to say, there are a lot of people who are not self-aware. So getting yeah. to that place. And they're used to it. And they're they used to being in it, so they think it's normal. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So it, you can grab one of Kendra's books. <laughs> and there's, there's, there's a list. You can, actually, you can actually see that. Or you can Google mm-hmm. and see what some of the signs are. Are okay, so Kendra, mm-hmm. let's talk about the let's talk about those teachers who are in it right now. So we got teachers mm-hmm. who are like, I'm feeling burnt out. Right. What oh, do okay. they do? What What's the first step in this? Well, there's uh, three types of teachers that contact me. The first one is just like me. Okay. They're exactly where I was ten years ago, which was you know I love it, but I'm tired. Uh-huh. And I'm being pulled in too, too many different directions. And I just, I don't have time for myself. I don't have time for my kids or anything like that. But then there's a second type of teacher that's like a robot. She's exactly what you just described, where she just has gotten used to it. Uh-huh. And she doesn't realize, he or she, he or she, is sorry, uh, doesn't realize that, you know, um, I just, I don't, the passion is gone. <laughs> right. Passion is gone. I've gotten, I've, they've forgotten their North Star. They've forgotten what it was. The Why they started, why did they do it? Then that last person is the person is they're one foot in, one foot out, mm-hmm. one foot in, one foot out. They've completely unplugged. There is no passion left. There is no purpose. It is just a job. And at the end of the year, I will be doing something else. Right. They're out. And so three of those teachers usually call me. And my advice is always, we always go back to how did you start? Mm. What made you get into it? What's your why? What did, where did it? And yeah. What's your why? And then we go back to, um, I call it the, um, the easy effort formula. We try to figure out what's going on for you to fix some of those things so we can get back to that place. Then we talk about um, uh, where are you in your career and are you satisfied with it? I cannot believe, I still can't believe, even though I've been doing this a while, Mm -hmm. that there are teachers that are teaching something that they don't like in a neighborhood they can't stand. Wow. And they're, they're with the age group that they do not actually, you know, that's not even their expertise. Right. And so that makes all the difference because you're spending a lot of time at your job every day. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing something that you don't like, it just makes the job that much worse, right? It just, everything starts to bother you. So like, uh, for example, I had a teacher, um, one of my testimonies is um, Tanya. Tanya was a friend of mine. We were, we started out as mentor mentees. So I was her mentor. She was my mentee and um, she could not stand um, English. Mm-hmm. So she came as an art teacher, but they stuck her in English. You know how they do the principals in there. Right. I, gotta, I need to I have an opening. Let me just put her in. She hated it. And so my job as a mentor was to, you know, convince her to, you know, let's let's figure out ways we can make it, you know, more exciting and more fun for you. But at the end of the this first year, she still didn't like it. 
Mm -hmm. She still didn't like it. And then I start. I told her to do these three things, these three things that I that subsequently had put into a book, because I, at the time, you don't you're not writing a book. You're just giving advice. Right. You're just trying right. to help someone else who's struggling more than you. And that's all I was doing was helping her. And she and I said, how did you get here? What do you want to do? And how what will you do to get what you want? So the third question is one that got her stuck because then I, I, I'm holding her responsible for what are you going to do? This is what you want. You want to teach art. I got it. But, you know, what are you going to do to get what you want? What do you have to sacrifice? What do you think you're going to have to give up to get what you want? Well, Ms. Johnson, they call me Ms. Johnson at the time. Ms. Johnson, I, I, I like it here. I like the neighborhood. I like the kids. And I like the, the, you know, I like you. I like all the people that work here. But I just don't like English. I said, did you talk to the principal? Yes. Did you ask her again before the, before the beginning of the year to put you back in art? She said yes. And at the beginning of the next year, the, the principal do, does what they normally do, is do what they want. And they left for in English. She said, I need you, Miss English, Miss Don, you got to stay. And she said, she came to me again. And I said, what are you going to do to get what you want? And she mm -hmm. went to a job fair and she put in her resume and she put it in and she got 10 <laughs> offers. She wow. interviewed with 17 different schools and she got 10 offers mm -hmm. to be an art teacher. Now, how long would she have stayed there had I not said that to her? Had I not right. you know, prompted her to do what she wanted to do? How long was she said? How many Tanyas do we know? I know tons of them. Tons. They just stay in. They just stay in it because it's a job. They told me I had to do it. I'm certified to do this, but I don't like it. But I'll do this anyway. Mm -hmm. And then they get grumpy, and then they get you know you know they get burnt out about it because really uh, a lot faster because you're not doing what you want to do. Right. Live in your purpose. Right. That this was is gonna, your degree. That was gonna be. <laughs> A, a question because I think a lot of teachers feel like they don't have a choice. Mm. You know, when you say, well, what is it that you want to just like, well, I'm not the one making the schedule, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not making the schedule. The principal said I had to do this, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. helping teachers to realize that you get to choose. You don't have to do anything. You get right. to choose whether or not you want to stay or mm -hmm. whether or not you want to leave. And there are options. Right. You do exactly. have options. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We start we start with those keys. Everybody got keys, right? We got keys. You got keys in your purse. You got mm -hmm. keys right now. Those keys probably open up a, a door to your house or your car or both, right? Right. Where you live and where you go in that car is your choice mm -hmm. stop going to these places to these schools and allowing mm -hmm. the people in charge to dictate your career right when i left the states i, re I remember making this statement to them because you know you get real flippant at the mouth when you get another contract somewhere else and you know it's better than the one you got now you get real like <laughs> mm -hmm, sassy so real i would sassy. say something to like um I would say things like uh, they need math and science teachers everywhere around the world. I'm going to find I'm going to find somebody that needs me because mm -hmm. they kept moving me around and I didn't like it. And I kept telling them, stop doing that. I'm a veteran teacher. Why are you moving me and not the new people? Move the, the newer people around. Don't, why am I getting moved? I should have the same classroom every year. Mm -hmm. And um, they were just, they were laughing at me and scoff at me. <laughs> it's just part of the job, Ms. Johnson. Uh-huh. It's part of your job. <laughs> My job is to take care of me. My job is to do what I want to do. I mm -hmm. like math and science. That's, I know that that's a high need area. I'm going to stay in this space that I want to be in. And my principal wasn't having it. She had a control issue. So her job was to, her job, she felt, was to make everybody do her bidding. And uh -huh. I was like, you, you don't have that much control over me. You don't. You see, you have control over this school and the decisions about this school, but my life is mine. Mm -hmm. And so I would have these conversations with people and they'd be like, Miss Johnson, we, everybody's not like you. Uh huh. Get the book. But I think, call me for a clarity call. Call me for a clarity call, and I'm gonna make. I'm gonna teach you how to be like me because mm. all it takes is a mindset shift. Right. I, shift I think the schools shift. do the students a disservice when they have people in the wrong place. Mm. Yes. When companies hire the wrong people mm -hmm. doing the job that they're not passionate about, they're mm -hmm. not doing a good mm -hmm. job. These are our children. Right. Mm -hmm. We are helping to develop them mm -hmm. to we, we criticize or some people criticize the children mm -hmm. that are outside in in the world. And 
not just at home, but they're being influenced at school as right. well by right. the teacher. So if you have someone, I don't want someone teaching my child that doesn't want to be there. Right. That See, doesn't, that's, that's not passionate happening. about it. Right. That they're not mm-hmm. an expert in this particular field. Mm-hmm. I don't right. want an art teacher teaching my kid math. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> because right. when they go they out like here math, in the world, can't do math and got to go open up the book. Right, and <laughs> when they go out in the world, people looking at them sideways because mm. you don't know this. This is simple arithmetic. Right. And they're like, mm-hmm. well, my art teacher told me. You know, it, it's. <laughs> I mean, if we if we're if we're looking at it at face value, if we're looking at it in right. black and white, it makes no mm. sense. Right. It's filling mm-hmm. a space. It's putting a warm body where it needs to be filled instead of putting the right person in the right position. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that is doing a disservice to our children. And we see it every day. Right. Every day. Every day. Right. Our children. Every day. Especially our black and brown children. Yes. Which mm-hmm. is so disheartening to me. hmm yeah. Because that's that some schools, that's not that's not gonna happen. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But I see a lot of my people, yeah. a lot of and it it's 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 sad. It's so sad. You know. It's you know, I don't mm-hmm. want a warm body touch teaching my kid. I want an expert. And and here's the thing though. The majority of teachers recognize that, and that is a part of where the frustration comes. I think a lot of Mm -hmm. times educators get the short end of the stick, and it's like those teachers, those teachers, those teachers. The truth Mm -hmm. is is that many of those teachers believe exactly what you just said. They agree with you, but they feel like they have no control Mm -hmm. over how anything is done. There was a time um, years ago I I started – teaching i think i did my student teaching in 1999 um and and, but during even during that time the pendulum was getting ready to swing but Mm -hmm. there was more autonomy in the 90s there was more autonomy in the 80s teachers had a lot more control Mm -hmm. over what happened in the classroom so you saw teachers staying uh, they were teachers for teaching grandparents. You could say, right. oh, I taught your right. grandmama, your mama, mm-hmm. and right. whatever, because mm-hmm. because the administrators, the powers that be, council people, Congress people, allowed teachers to teach. Well, now there's a huge, there's been a huge shift. Teachers don't have that level of autonomy, and mm-hmm. that is a part of what is leading to the burnout. So, so to, yeah. for us to sit here and say, this is the issue. Teachers are going, yes, you're right. Mm-hmm. You're right. And that, and, and that is the issue. And so what I want to make sure, even in this conversation, is that teachers know that they have a choice. They do. That they have options, right? Mm-hmm. There are other things that they can do beyond leaving the profession, Mm-hmm. Yes, because many of us love teaching like I love yes. teaching um, mm-hmm. and I think it's important for us to know that if education is going to if we're going if they're going to have an educational system. They're going to need teachers. Right. I don't care if you do it virtually. <laughs> right. I don't care if you do it in person. I don't care how you do it. You're going to need teachers and teachers. I think need to step into that place of power and knowing Mm -hmm. that, you know what? Y'all need me to be here. Mm -hmm. Exactly. (laughs) So you need me more than I need you. Mm -hmm. Yes. So therefore we need to begin to sit at the table and acting Mm -hmm. on that because they know it already on it. Yes. Right. They know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they know they need me more than I need them, but are you acting on that? Mm -hmm. Are you showing them? Mm -hmm. Are your actions backing up what you're saying and believing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because leadership, they need to hear this as well. They need to understand, Mm -hmm. okay, I don't have to do what everyone else is doing. Mm -hmm. I can put people in the right places. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, yeah, I'm, you go ahead. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> no, we, I mean, this, is, this is this this is a hot hot topic. Hot topic. Before, it is. It's a hot button for me as well. Before mm-hmm. we continue, I want to make sure that we acknowledge the people who are in the room with us um, on our Facebook page. I want to shout out Jamar Lowe. Thank you for joining us tonight, and thank you for sending the stars. Those of you who are on Facebook, if you enjoy the content. If you like what we bring to the table, you can sow a mm-hmm. seed. Bless us with, with some stars. Thank you, Jamar. We appreciate you. We Thank see you. Trusty Trusty. How you doing? She said, uh, hello, ladies. Thank you for joining us tonight. We appreciate you. Um, Shante Quellyar. She says, I became an adjunct instructor for medical assistance. Being a former nurse, I loved it. Faced a lot of challenges initially due to my teaching style. Yep, teaching styles will um, will lead into mm-hmm. some spaces as well. You find yourself mm-hmm. being told you have to teach a certain way or you right. can't do mm-hmm. certain things. And that can definitely mm-hmm. lead to some burnout. Mm-hmm. Um, hello, Krista Simmons. She says, I am a teacher and realtor. Got to make ends meet. Oh, that's mm-hmm. a whole other discussion. Yeah, it um, sure is. <laughs> this is my 17th year, and I have even mm-hmm. seen things change so much. Yes, Krista, lots of changes. Um, and she says, I love teaching. I love it when I can be with the students and actually teach them. That is something that I would like for us to make sure that We make no, we understand that a vast majority of teachers love their jobs. They Mm -hmm. love teaching. They love the young people. If you ask the average teacher why they want to leave, they'll tell you it's not the kids. Right. It's not. Most teachers will say it is not the, it doesn't matter how raggedy June Bug them is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Most teachers, Real talk, most teachers love June Bug and Pookie Num. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cuz it's a challenge. It's a challenge that they're willing to Yes, you know. it's not yes. the kids, it's yes, the bureaucracy. Yes. It's the red tape, yeah. it's yeah. it's all yep. the foolishness that's connected to yep. it, right? So Kendra, yep. all mm-hmm. right. So we we talked a bit about um some signs we talked about if you're in it knowing that you can come out of it. Do you ever get teachers in your space who are like, I'm done? Yes. <laughs> done, done, done. <laughs> what do yes. you, what do you do for them? What do you suggest for those teachers who are saying, I hear y'all, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm just, I'm done. What, what I'm do done, you say yeah. to those teachers? Well, they you, if they call me and they say that they're done, I usually don't argue. I'm like, okay, well, let's go ahead and figure out how we got here okay. and how we can prevent it to the next job. Because, see, if the problem is, just like I said, I, I when I moved here, the problems just, you know, they didn't stop. Mm-hmm. I had to do the ch- the work on me. Right. So if the problem is, you know, because it's, it's a few it's a few things. If it's if it's a place, then you know, let's just switch jobs. Let's go to another school, see if you can have a better experience. Mm-hmm. But if those problems keep re- re- reoccurring, then it's probably not necessarily the school or the principal. It might be something where maybe you are finished with the the world of teaching children, but you don't have to be in a classroom to be an educator. Yes. And I have other coaches. I have other coaches, friends, coach friends and mentor friends who have businesses, whole businesses dedicated to helping teachers transition into other parts of education, like being in consulting, Mm -hmm. uh, which is what I do. And then being in um, um, writing books, or helping people write curriculum, mm-hmm. or being a counselor, being a uh, a representative for the book companies. Mm-hmm. They love teachers. The people that go around and sell these programs, these million dollar programs to these right. districts that don't nobody use. People, <laughs> those those, um, those companies love educators. They love educators because you know we we're not afraid to speak up. Mm-hmm. You know we're more more than likely have the educational background that we need in order to be able to um to 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 speak to teachers. And so, yeah, there's always an avenue where you can go somewhere else. However, before when you if you call me, mm-hmm. then there's probably a thing that you're you're asking for some help, right? If you call right. me, you're asking for help. So what I help them do is to figure out the why. Mm. Why are you here and why did you get here? Where do you really want to see yourself in five years or ten years? And if they say something, I just want to be at peace. Well, you might not be at peace. If if the peace is not coming from you, then it won't go it won't be around you wherever you go. 
Right. You have to you have to make sure that you are taking care of yourself and that your mindset is okay. Because if the problem is you, it doesn't matter where you work. Right. I have absolutely seen that. I have absolutely seen this in my career and working with teachers and being a mentor that, you know, you know, it's these kids, it's these kids. And they go to another school and then they call in me. It's those kids, it's those kids. <laughs> and then they go to another school. It's those kids, it's those kids. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Some some you sure it's the kids? Because the bottom line is you. Right. You sure? The bottom line is you. And I have run it. You have and I have, and you've met those teachers who have no business in the classroom. Right? None. You right. <laughs> You Absolutely. You work with them. They have no business there. I have had conversations <laughs> with them about why don't you just think about doing something else? You ever thought about doing something else? This might not be for you because you have to have a heart for these children. If you yes. don't, it will show and it I, will affect everything around them. I think it must be said. Yes. That being in the wrong profession <laughs> will mm-hmm. cause burnout. Mm-hmm. Yes. We have yes. to say it. There are some people mm-hmm. who should not be teaching anybody's baby fur babies. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Babies, yeah. babies, <laughs> cabbage patch babies, like nothing. Mm-hmm. nothing. And part of the reason there are some teachers who are burnout is because they're in the wrong profession. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and and you needing to pay rent should not be a reason that you go right. into education right. or any profession or any profession for but especially not our yeah. especially not teaching people's babies. Right. Come on, Charnel. Yeah. Right. We, we need them not in the classroom. No argument Amen. from me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it sounds like, Kendria, that yeah. um it sounds like you want to help teachers remain in the profession. That's what it yes. sounds like. It's, it's not that you want, you know, people come in to help them leave, but mm-hmm. you're saying, hey, I can help you to remain and to be healthy and whole in the mm-hmm. profession that you love. Is that kind yes. of, am I kind of in the right space? You are absolutely in the right space. And then um, I can't say I've, I've mentored thousands of teachers, but uh-huh. I have spoken to hundreds, especially mm-hmm. for the book. And when they walk away from me, they think about things differently. And if they walk away from my program, let's say I've coached them for three months, six months to a year, Mm -hmm. and they walk away thinking, you know, um, I'm going to go back into this and see if I can do it another year. Mm -hmm. And they have the same issues, then they can't say no one told them because I told you. Right. The, the issues will not come. They won't fix themselves. Right. You have to change your mindset about the issues and cut. learn how to cut that phone off, put some boundaries around yourself. Ooh, no, you, you know, didn't tell no them teachers to turn the phone off. Yeah, turn that phone off. Uh-huh. I th- <laughs> turn that phone off. Yeah. The issue will be there tomorrow. Turn that phone <laughs> off. That should be understood. No, you're not allowed to call me after, after 7 o'clock. Mm-hmm. After the sun goes down, you're not allowed to call me about anything that has to do with school. Mm. Don't get, no, parents, teachers, principal. I don't care if it's on fire. Don't mm. call me. Do not call me. Leave a message or a text saying the school is on fire. You ain't got to come in tomorrow. I'll catch it in the morning. Don't worry. But I'm not going to, you know, interrupt my own day. And I have to make sure that I am on the schedule. Right. I'm on my own schedule. Me. I'm on it. Instead of me having to to put time but to squeeze myself in, right. I am on it. And so what I do is I teach teachers how to do those steps, those six steps that I have in the book, uh-huh. just to make sure that they, if they, if they do want to leave, then you've earned your way out. Right. <laughs> Once you go through the book and you're like, you know what? I still want to leave. Go ahead. Well, yeah, let me, <laughs> let me introduce you to my friends. Let right. me give you their phone number and they can help you find another position somewhere else. If that's what you want. I have no problem with that. Cause, but I, w- the reason why I started this movement angel was because I was tired of seeing good teachers, mm-hmm. good teachers walk out of the schools. We'll just gotcha. walk out. And these, these are not the lazy ones. The lazy ones still there. The ones that don't need to be teaching. They're still uh-huh. there. Right. It's a Collecting a check. Yes. They, it's yes. a paycheck to them. They're yeah. still there. But the teachers that were like me, they were walking out. They, there's a teacher right now. My friend is um, a manager for one of the hotel uh, Holiday Inn Expresses. She'd uh-huh. rather do that than teach seventh grade math. She was an excellent teacher. Wow. I went to her for everything. But she would rather do that than to be in the schools. And then I talked to her recently. And she was like, I, if, if I had had you 15 years ago, maybe I wouldn't have left. Right. Right. So I became the solution to the problems that I had long before. I became the solution that I needed. 
Right. I wrote this book for them. I wrote the, this book for those teachers. My Everybody might not feel what, like we feel about it sometimes. You know, their kids are great. Parents are great. Principal's great. School is great. But the, my experience is is simply that it can be daunting because a lot of the things we just talked about, about the politics and the bureaucracy, those are things you get overwhelmed with that and you feel like I'm just a small wheel in a, in a big pond. Right. Like, no, no, no. Now get on in there and get your voice heard. And if they don't listen to you, be ready to make a move. Oh, be ready to call a bluff and make a move because they kept, I kept bluffing. Wolf <laughs> tickets. Like, Stop selling them wolf double tickets. Double. <laughs> 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 Stop selling them wolf tickets. You know what? This is also one of my favorite. Well, my favorite Bible scripture is all things work together for my good. So anytime Mm -hmm. things get crazy, Mm -hmm. I say, okay, this is somehow this is for my good. I don't understand it. Uh But this is an example of someone living it, Uh learning it, experiencing Mm -hmm. it. Now she's selling it. Right. She's monetizing it. Yes. Because she's mm-hmm. turning something that was so, I don't want to say evil, but something that was annoying mm-hmm. or frustrating, pain. unhealthy, yes. Yes. unproductive. And now yeah. there's, there's a niche for it yeah. because she's yeah. not the only one. Right. And this is, a, this is we all go through things in life mm-hmm. and we're feeling like we're the only one right. and we're not. And you can, yeah. if you are able to overcome yeah. that, yeah. you can monetize that. Right. You can tell, you can help other people look at, who are going through the same thing. Look at the coach over here. <laughs> Profit and cleaning coach over here. She is going to find a I way. Chanel is going to find a way <laughs> to help you become an entrepreneur. And, and, and yeah. she's right though. Yeah. What, what Kendria did was find she realized there was a problem. She became an expert mm-hmm. in her pain. Yeah, she and sold it. She, girl, mm-hmm. I'm trying to become tell you. an expert <laughs> in your pain and sell it. Exactly. Sell the solution. Yep. Y'all better right. catch these jewels. Listen, Krista Simmons is on mm-hmm. Facebook. She has a question. And and mm-hmm. Krista says, How do you ladies feel about emails and phone calls coming through from admin during the day when you are trying? Trying to teach Kendria. I already know what Kendria mm-hmm. gonna tell you. Kendria, yeah, 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 awesome. <laughs> Kendria, how, yeah. can you ask? Can you give us an answer? Um, ignore, backspace, delete. Oh, you know, silent because you're teaching. Your job. You're here for the kids. Mm-hmm. The sometimes principal's power trip, and that sounds like a power trip and move because she knows you in school. You know, she knows you working. Uh-huh. But you, your job is to work for children. Now the admins they do give you some some grief sometimes because they get power hungry they get their their position gets to their head every once in a while mm-hmm. I'm not saying this is the situation but you know your job is for the children if she calls you on it right if she says hey I sent you an email I called you I texted you where well, you know I was teaching I was uh-huh. doing the job that I was paid to do right. that yes. I'm, I'm hired to do what is it that you actually need and then if it's it, it, I guarantee you more than likely it's probably not an emergency they just right. want to talk to you about such 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 see your your inability to plan your day is not an emergency to me so right. therefore you can put that in the email I'll catch it later you don't know how many conversations I've had with admin and you know what they still respect me right they respect the fact that I put the kids first right and that like, goes it, back and then to you they'll creating say things that like schedule. you know I need to see you. I need to see you. Okay, well, did you need to put somebody in my class? Because I can't leave these seventh graders unattended. Right. So, so put, if you send somebody in here, I'll be happy to come to your classroom. I'm right. going to drop everything and leave those 25 kids in there by themselves. That's I'm, I'm not doing them a service. Right. I'm not helping. I'm, I'm actually going against the rules by exactly. doing that. Exactly. Send someone in my room, and then I'll be over there. Or stop calling me. <laughs> and, you know, stop calling me. And then maybe, you know, put it in the email because – it's always something that they just want to tell you. Right. They could have waited till three. Right. But I used to always power, say air, air on the side of the kids. Yes. If, if I'm going to air, I'm going to mm-hmm. air on the side of the kids. And so if I'm going to get gonna, in I'm trouble, yes, mm-hmm. if, if Angel's going to get in trouble, it's going to be because she was doing what was in the best interest of the, the children. children and answering your phone calls and emails in the middle of my class is not in the best interest of the children so prayerfully krista that that helps a little bit there um heather says i'll have my kid text me during the school Uh, heather (laughs) 
Heather, let me tell you something about Speak Up Sis podcast. You got to be careful with them comments because, <laughs> <laughs> sis, you're going to hear some stuff. Listen, yeah, I, but you know what? We don't know what your personal situation is and all that good mm-hmm. stuff. So you you know what you need to do. Um, but those phones, yeah, we got to we gotta figure out what to do with those phones, um, you know, while I, we're I, at work. I think it. I believe it has a lot to do with discipline. Mm-hmm. So even mm-hmm. even just in business or in life, mm-hmm. we mm-hmm. live in a microwave society. Everybody wants what they want when they want it immediately. Right. right. But if you say, okay, I have a time block on my calendar and from mm-hmm. 12 to 1230, I'm going to respond to emails. Right. Mm-hmm. If it comes at one o'clock and I'm done responding to my mm-hmm. emails, you I'll get wait. it. The, right. Mm-hmm. You, but you have to be disciplined in that, yeah, because you're yeah. training people right on how to treat you, right. So if yeah. you are interrupting your class to respond to a That's message right. or yeah. whatever, next time you you decide I'm not going to do it, yeah. they're going to say, "Well, you did it last time. That's I right. thought it was okay." Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, you mm-hmm. have to set those boundaries, yeah, and just mm-hmm. in life in general, not just you know. I know we're talking to an educator right now, but. Yeah. You have to set those boundaries. Yeah. yeah. Right. Even if you put an auto reply message saying, I got your message. <laughs> I'll respond to it between this time and that time. Yes. Right. And it's not yes. just the administrators, it's the parents as well. Right. I've no had one's going to die. With, um, uh, I've had, <laughs> and there is no emergency in education. That right. is in the book. <laughs> there is no emergency in education, y'all. We are not doctors on call. No one is going to be left in surgery with a scalpel right. because I can't pick up my phone. Right. That's not that's not what we do here. But I've had conversations with superintendents and I've had conversations with principals. They have a different level of stress, but they yes. still have their own version yes. of burnout. And what the principal mm-hmm. was saying was, you know, I tell my teachers they have to be on call 24 hours. They have to always have their what? phone. I said, and that's why you keep replacing teachers every year, sir. That is why you're replacing teachers. That's yes. why 80% of your staff is being replaced every year. That's because insane. Because you're saying that their time, your time is more important, or the parents' time is more important than their time. That's not fair. I didn't sign up for that. And you, you're you going to pay me to be on call 24 hours a day? Then I don't think so. We're not doing that. Right. And so I said, <laughs> Well, I don't, I don't need to send my teachers to you because you're going to make them do a rebellion. I said, no, you need to just go through my course. You need to go get my online course and to you need to come to my the workshops teachers. so you can understand right. where teachers are coming from and why, why they're burnt out and why you have to replace your staff. That's why you keep getting knuckleheads because you keep getting people that you have to take because all the good teachers are being run off because people know their value and they know their worth and they know that there's other schools out there. There's always somewhere I can go where I can feel a little bit more comfortable. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that is an abuse of power to tell teachers, you know, you have to have your phone on all the time. For what? What? What are you going to call me? I, children, are you going to call me at midnight and say it's a class in there waiting on me? What, what, why are you calling me at, you know, midnight about some grades? This has happened to me. Right. This happened so, to everybody, everybody so the, I know. It's, this, it happens to me. This principal, did this principal take your your course come through your program? No. No, <laughs> no that's a power <laughs> issue. Because think about it. If you're, in a, if you're in a place of power and you can tell people that all day long uh-huh. and get away with it, uh-huh. then, yeah, you're going to try to keep that power. But the people that are that are leaving your organization are not speaking well about you. Right. I won't say the school and I won't say the principal, but, you know, they're not speaking well about you uh-huh. because you're not running an effective ship. There are leaders and there are bosses and there are managers. Right. What you're trying to do is be a boss. You're just telling everybody what to do. Mm. But what you need to be is a manager and a leader for them. They need you to lead them. They don't right. need you to tell them uh, at eight o'clock at night. I, we have a meeting tomorrow, blah, 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 blah. Them, send that in an email. Come on. Now. Right. But um, the problems that people have. Mm hmm. Sometimes we contribute to because we don't speak up. Right. I like what Charnel was saying early about, you know, you teach people how to treat. I say that all mm-hmm. the time. I have autonomy at my, at my job because I designed it that way. Mm-hmm. I designed it that way. Right. You don't think parents complain about me. You don't think the principal sometimes get, I get on her nerves because I'm like, I'm not doing that. You, can do, <laughs> you find somebody else to do that. I'm not doing that. I'm not coming in here on no Saturday for these kids for free. Nope. If they're not getting it between Monday and Friday, I'm so sorry. Right now, if you want to pay me, then that's fine. But I'm not going to do that for free. If when I say no, and I say no quite often, there's a chapter <laughs> in the book that says no is a complete uh, no is a complete sentence. Mm-hmm. Then it's me protecting uh, my peace and my time because right. time is the only commodity you don't get back. Right. So you're not going to replace, you know, my my time with money. 
because sometimes money is not a, is not an effect. If I just want to be at home on a Saturday, mm-hmm. I need to be at home on a Saturday. I right. have tons of stories of how I've stood up for myself. Mm-hmm. I am my own testimony. Right. So I, if if even if I could get my my clients in here to testify, I can testify. Two weeks ago, two weeks ago, <laughs> they called me. They called me and said the grades were due. The some something was due, and I was like, "But it's it's Friday at three o'clock." Right. Yeah, they're due by they're due by midnight. I said they're not gonna be due today. <laughs> I, I'm in Dubai. Right. I'm on my weekend. It started, so they're not gonna be due today. I'm brunching. They, they were like, well, Miss Kendra, Miss Kendra, we need, it, we need it by front. We need it by midnight. You need it by midnight. I heard what you said, but I am already on vacation. Call me on Monday morning, and you we'll talk about it. Right. And they didn't call me again. And Monday, sure enough. I could still do the grades on Monday. They had to unclick a button and then click it right. back. I put the grades in. They had to click it back. You, you, you'll be okay. You they will be, fine. be so okay. People want you to make be fine. their emergency your emergency. Your emergency. Right. And, and that's not behind it. Yeah. No. And it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna yeah. happen. So listen, ladies. Yeah. I know it happens all the time, but we got five <laughs> minutes left. We got five minutes left in the show, and this has been a great conversation. My mouth hit this thing here. This has been a great conversation, Kendria. I have thoroughly enjoyed talking to you. Um, the Everyone who's watching, uh, I believe they love. I've seen the hearts flowing and all that good stuff. Um, let me just say really quickly uh, to to Heather. Heather. Heather's on. She said, I'm sorry. Heather, no, you don't have to say <laughs> sorry, sis. Listen, we we joke and jive in this space all the time. We accept comments, questions, all that good stuff. You just got to be ready for whatever the response is going to be when it comes through. That's all. Um, So before we leave, though, I would like for you, Kendria, to once again share with people um, how they can connect with you, how they can uh, uh, work with you one on one if they if they choose to, how they can get your book, get in your course, all that good stuff. Uh, share your social media handles. Let the people know how they can connect with you, sis. Okay. Well, uh, my personal website is www.iamkendria.com. That's K E N D R I A I M Kendria.com is, you know, no dashes, no spaces. And all of my information is actually there. An excerpt of the book is there because I have an audio version, okay. the Kindle version, and the um, paperback. And the uh, audio version is there, also a sample of the book. You can also see a, a list of my courses. You can take some things online because I'm overseas, but I still work with people in the States. And if you are interested in one to one coaching, I, I recommend that you do some of the online coursework first. And then give me a call. But some people just call me straight away. Listen, I need your help. <laughs> so if you want all of my information, go to www.iamkendria.com. My email is there. My phone number is there, even though I live in another country and I probably won't pick up if it's crazy hours. But my email is there. Always email me. That's the best way to get in touch with me. And I can send you my links to anything that you need. There's a free master class on the, uh, my website as well. It's an hour long about the six steps to successful teaching. Mm-hmm. It's a prelude to this book. And if if you want video, sorry, audio, paperback or Kindle, all of those links are there. Perfect. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Well, Kendra, I want to say thank you so very much for saying yes to coming into this space and sharing yourself and sharing your um, testimony, sharing your work and all that good stuff with us as well as our listeners. I have thoroughly enjoyed uh, just chopping it up with you. It's not too often that I get a chance to talk to other teachers that have done some of the things that I've done in my career. So it has been wonderful, and I appreciate you coming into the space. Shawnell, would you like to say something to Kendra before we step out for the night? I just thank you for being here. You gave some great points and nuggets, Mm -hmm. just not just in teaching, but just in life in general, right? Mm -hmm. How to organize and and put boundaries in your life and Mm -hmm. protecting your peace. So I and you talked a lot about mind shift mindset Mm -hmm. and how you need to shift that. And I thought that was that was really good. I really appreciate that. And I think our viewers do yeah. as well. Yeah, we've got lots of lots of great feedback. So everyone, we are coming to a close tonight. I appreciate every single person who showed up tonight, whether you are in our YouTube space, please make sure that you 
click subscribe and become a part of our YouTube community. If you are on our Facebook page, thank you so much for tuning in tonight and, and commenting and asking your questions and all that good stuff. We appreciate you. Charnel and I are here every third Monday of the month for Encouraging Experts. If you're interested in being a guest, please visit speakupsis.com slash podcast that speakupsis.com slash podcast and click the become a guest button we would love to have you in this space to share your expertise with our listeners and listen if you have not gotten a copy of the speak up sis magazine go and do that and until next time don't forget to open up your mouth and speak, speak up. up take care